there is so much going on this week, but there is one issue we should not allow ourselves to be distracted from, the country's human rights situation. The proud human rights violator, Rodrigo Duterte, may no longer be president, but the forces he unleashed, the culture of violence and violation he inspired, the trauma and damage he caused, they are still very much around. On November 14, for the first time since 2017, the Philippines submitted itself to a process the United Nations Human Rights Council calls the Universal Periodic Review, a high-profile opportunity to discuss the true state of affairs. Who made the most of the opportunity in Geneva? The government, the member countries who make up the council, or Philippine civil society? Good evening. I'm John Neri, and you are in the public square. Christina Palabay, Secretary General of the Human Rights Group Karapatan, took part in the review as head of delegation of the Philippine UPR Watch Network. The winner of the Franco-German Prize for Human Rights and the Rule of Law last year, Dinay joins us from Switzerland. Carlos Conde, Senior Philippine Researcher of Human Rights Watch, was present at the 2017 UPR, a distinguished foreign correspondent before turning to human rights advocacy. He joins us, well, from the Philippines. Welcome, Inay and Kaloy, and thank you for joining us in the public square. Hi, thank you, John, for having us. Magandang tanghali, John. Yes, uh, thank you for joining us, Tinay. It's 1 p.m. there. Uh, we really appreciate this. Before we get to the questions, let me just note that I relied on the on-site reporting of Rappler's Jodes Gavilan. But unfortunately, she cannot join us tonight because she is in transit somewhere in Europe at the very moment. Dinay, my first question is for you. What was the Philippine UPR Network and also the International Coalition of Human Rights doing in Geneva? What, what did you set out to do? Well, John, since 2008, we have been engaging in the UPR process when it started, no? when it was instituted by the UN Human Rights Council. So, um, talagang, uh, every, my, every cycle of the UPR, uh, very active ang civil society sa atin in participating. Uh, yung network that we co-convened, Philippine UPR Watch, uh, submitted 21 uh, uh, individual and joint uh, submissions last March tungkol sa human rights situation, alternative reports essentially, tungkol sa human rights situation sa bansa um, and then uh, this session uh, medyo marami kami no, na pumunta dito sa Geneva to monitor uh, what, happen, what happened uh, I think the other day no, uh, doon po sa uh, review ng Pilipinas tungkol sa compliance dito sa international human rights um, treaties and covenants. So essentially, we did many things. Eh. We met with, I think, 40 to 50 missions. We did uh, mm -hmm. so many side events. We met with uh, at least 10 uh, special procedures. So we had a productive engagement here in Geneva. And I want to make clear that this is part of the process. I mean, the, the UN process allows uh, stakeholders like civil society organizations to do this. Oh yes, oh, lalo na yung mga human rights defenders. Um, mm -hmm. uh, may uh, kumbaga may space, may spaces na ganon no, para sa mga civil society organizations. Although of course, um, as what we observed, medyo ano rin, uh, lumiliit yung espasyo uh, ng intervention ng civil society sa mga ganitong uh, UN processes. But you know, um, anywhere else, whether it is in our country o dito, nagpo-pushback tayo, eh, di ba? Para mm -hmm. sa uh, espasyo para marinig yung um, tinig ng mamamayan uh, before governments when they talk among themselves, like the UPR. Yeah. Uh, Secretary Remulia, uh, Secretary of Justice, was also there, made the case for the Philippines. Uh, before we talk about uh, some of the things that he said specifically, Kalo, I wanted to ask you, uh, you were not uh, in Geneva uh, for this UPR, but you were there in 2017 uh, and you were also uh, you also covered the uh, Human Rights Council annual session last September 
Um, can you give us a compare and contrast uh, between 2017 and 2022? Uh, of course, 2017, that was uh, more or less the first year under Duterte. Uh, and now it's like six months into uh, the second President Marcos. Um, can you give us a compare and contrast? Yeah, sure. Thank you, John. Uh, but before I, got, uh, I go into that, I'd like to point out that uh, in this session of the UPR, uh, the role of civil society has really become increasingly uh, uh, huge. And uh, there's, the UPR, there's nothing, there's no other mechanism in the UN system that does what it does, which is to review the UN's performance and commitments to a country, uh, which is why uh, if we, you know, we know how the UN Human Rights Council uh, works is that it's uh, mainly a political body because members are states. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the UPR, there's a space, a large space for civil society. And that's why we're so happy that Tina and all the others are there. Now, on your question on comparing the 2017 UPR uh, uh, session, the review, and now, unfortunately, I wasn't there, as you pointed out. But essentially, it's the same thing in terms of how the government responded to uh, you know, to the issues of human rights that were docu uh, that were being documented in twenty uh, in the run up to the twenty seventeen review. One crucial difference, however, is that uh, whereas this session, the drug war and the extrajudicial killings related to the drug war took center mm -hmm. center stage at that time in twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot of documentation on the uh, the toll of the human right on, 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 of the drug war yet. Although there were, uh, you know, testimonies, there were um, some documentation by human rights groups, including Human Rights Watch. The full scope of the catastrophe that we saw beginning 2016, uh, uh, in, uh, going to the following years, were only, uh, you know, we only managed to see that after 2017, uh, you know, in terms of the documentation. So that's one, I wouldn't say it's a problem during the 2017 review, but that was mm -hmm. one of the, I would say, issues that came up. And also the fact that Mr. Duterte at the time uh, was very, very uh, vocal in his uh, indignation toward the UN system, toward the international mm -hmm. community. So that all that violent rhetoric that he spouted um, 2016, 2017, sort of... Um, I wouldn't want to use the word "dominated," um, mm -hmm. uh, for lack, but for lack of a better word, I will. Um, that's sort of like in everybody's mind, particularly in the states' uh, mind at the time. So that was a crucial thing. Yeah, he, uh, he was as good. Go ahead. Yeah, and, Go ahead. and also, also, but also now in, uh, under the Marcos uh, administration, I mean, the one comparison, perhaps, or I would say. Uh, not comparison, but a point to make is that we have now a government that's very, very uh, serious or that's very, very, I would say, determined to try to sell itself as something, as an administration that's so different from the third day and that it promises mm -hmm. to do things better. So um, is that good? In general, probably, but we, uh, you know, uh, the 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 whole point about the UPR is that we still need to see some action. Yes, I, I, I read stories about uh, uh, human rights groups uh, asking the Human Rights Council not to fall for the uh, diplomatic charm offensive uh, of the <laughs> Marcus administration. Uh, so Secretary Boeing Rimulia had some interesting language that he used. Uh, but it seems, at least to me, clear what his objective was, which is really for the Philippines... Uh, essentially to not be held accountable by the Human Rights yes. Council. Um, did, I, did, did he meet his objective? Well, I don't think so, no, John, because uh, having 30 to 40 states um, vocal about uh, their continuing uh, condemnation of the, of the mm -hmm. extrajudicial killings, calling on independent investigations at the domestic level, um, and then, uh, mas marami ang uh, recommendations ngayon. I don't know, Kaloy, if, if you compare it ng 2017, but I think mas marami ang uh, recommendations on uh, the attacks against human rights defenders and journalists, no? especially, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. you know, the, the past years that those have been the really stark ano, um, documented cases. So, I think um, 
to a certain, you know, the UPR is a peer review process. The Human Rights Council is a, essentially a group of states, no? So mm -hmm. you, you can't expect really strong, lang. I mean, we're keeping our expectations low, Kaloy, <laughs> on, the, on, on, the, on the strength of the language. But I think um, they're calling out uh, of uh, these violations also there by there you know, in the states um, also says a lot about how they didn't buy uh, the whole national government report. I read the report it's mm -hmm. um, hindi ano eh maganda very very summary ano lang, um, mm -hmm. points no? they didn't even dispute uh, really uh, well yung tungkol sa kawalan ng domestic accountability me mechanism. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. when when Secretary Remulia was uh, talking before the council and was saying, oh, uh, the police investigated uh, 17 cases of uh, 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 alleged violations sa mga police, 27 na yung na-dismiss, uh, 16 or 20 yung uh, na iniimbestigahan pa, talagang napanganga kami. Parang Diyos ko, paano mo naman ito ipagmamalaki? <laughs> 17,000. Imagine. Tapos you're saying 26 lang yung ano, na-dismiss. So, talagang halatang halata. Tingin namin, uh, to a certain extent, uh, the, the states saw through all the, the, the lies. I mean, we were even surprised that uh, the U.S. Uh, surprised, no? <laughs> Dahil we didn't mm -hmm. expect the U.S., for example, no? To take a strong mm -hmm. stand on uh, red tagging, for example, no? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, reiterate its uh, views on the uh, ICC and the uh, return to the Rome Statute, no? Nung, ano, Pilipinas. So there were many, many um, recommendations and comments by states uh, that have, um, that, that prove na, um, they they think that the situation remains uh, unaddressed, uh, yung mga violations dito sa sa atin sa Pilipinas. Um, maybe we can spend some time later uh, talking about what we can really expect from the Human Rights Council and 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 the and the review process. No? I mean, realistically speaking, uh, what. Uh, what can be done? What, what can a state do uh, or uh, what can be done to a state in that process? But if you don't mind, uh, I wanted, I'm, I'm curious, uh, and uh, Tina, you can also answer this because, I, because I'm, I'm sure you, you've also seen the uh, former Justice Secretary uh, also deal with these questions. Can we talk about like how, how Remulia comported himself and presented the, the case versus uh, Secretary Guevara? Um, when he was representing the uh, Duterte administration, is is there something there or? Hello, first. <laughs> well, um, you know, the one thing that I would say is that they're operating from the same script, basically, which is to, mm -hmm. to try to uh, mislead the international community, the UN, about what's really happening. Uh, in the Philippines on the ground uh, as far as human rights is is concerned. I mean, they, uh, Mr. Rimulia did, you know, try his best. And in fact, he trotted out recent developments in the Percy Lapid case and, mm -hmm. and, and many other, the release of some 300 uh, inmates. Uh, but we knew from the get-go that uh, those uh, uh, sort of quote-unquote developments uh, in the human rights uh, uh, situation in the Philippines uh, those who are going to be uh, used uh, precisely uh, in the international in an international body like the UPR system. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's always that there's always that uh, uh, you know uh, move or there's always that uh, objective by the Justice Department, by Rimulia, and even by Minardo Guevara, to really mm -hmm. uh, uh, present uh, a picture to the international community that they deem palatable. I mean, Tinay, for instance, mentioned the, re the national report of the Philippines at this uh, UPR, and I read it. It's it's a piece of trash, to be honest. It's, it says I mean, it didn't even it didn't it didn't, it didn't even mention the drug war killings, and all it all it uh, listed there are you know the existing laws in the Philippines that has to do with human rights. Now, mm -hmm. when I say trash, I mean, it's in the context of the drug war and all these really serious human rights violations. I mean, mm -hmm. but I also have to point out that, 
you know, uh, to be fair to this, to the government and the previous government, there are laws in the Philippines that have been passed that have mm -hmm. good human rights implications, uh, mm -hmm. and which which are good. But also, uh, the, the the passage of those laws, the fact that these are being done, is not should not extinguish the problems that we've been facing since 2016, which is the, the extrajudicial killings related to the drug war, all the other attacks against activists and all of that. So, you know, they, they, they proceed from that. And that national report prepared by the Presidential Committee on Human Rights. Now, keep in mind, this committee mm -hmm. is the uh, kind of in-house human rights propaganda arm of the Office of the President. Mm -hmm. And all they put there are just really, you know, things that they know uh, or that they hope that the international community uh, would like to hear, but it doesn't reflect the, the 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 full scope of the human rights situation on the ground. So, again, both the previous Secretary of Justice and now Rimulia, they operate from the same, you know, kind of uh, uh, playbook, and 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 we see we, we see that in this UPR. Uh, Tinay, your thoughts? Uh, is there any meaningful difference uh, between mm -hmm. Rimulia's approach and Guevara's? I agree with Kaloy. There's one script, no, mm -hmm. um, to to uh, show that the Philippines complies with all its obligations, etc. Um, pero you you'll you'll see how uh, I mean I think it bo all boils down to facts, no, and when facts are rolled out, and when facts are uh, omitted in the, for example, in the national government in the government report you immediately know no kung ano yung balak uh, the balak was <laughs> uh, talagang ibenta na the, the current government is different from the previous government uh, there's a UN joint program kaloy no there's a UN joint yeah. program that is uh, there to address uh, the situation no but at the end of the day um, walang maipakita tungkol sa nagawa in terms of uh, successful prosecutions and convictions. We're not just talking about investigations right now. I mean, we've, we've been to a drug war, a murderous drug war. Um, mm -hmm. We've been through many years of um, uh, threats, attacks, and vilification against government critics. And dami nangyari, sa totoo lang, between 2017, the period mm -hmm. under review, hanggang mm -hmm. ngayon, no, mm -hmm. na we, we, we're, we're beyond talking about uh, invest investigations lang. No? Plus, kaya nga may ICC eh. <laughs> kaya nga pumunta yung mga biktima sa ICC, di ba? Mm -hmm. Because uh, domestic mechanisms are really failing no? to address uh, the accountability issues dito sa ating bansa. But when, you know, we, we notice that when um, uh, Secretary Remulia goes off script, for example, when he reacted on I think he reacted on the numerous states who spoke about red tagging. Uh, mm -hmm. Ano eh, uh, nagbago yung tono niya mula nung October eh, when he said in he said that uh, oh eh, red tagging is part of democracy. He said that mm -hmm. ba? in in October. Ngayon mm -hmm. naman sinabi niya red tagging is not our policy. So <laughs> pag na, pag napipikon siguro nag off script si secretary eh. <laughs> at uh, minsan minsan na, na nakikita mo yung ano eh yung tag dito uh, but, may, may, ano, eh. oh may pag, mga pagkakaiba dito <laughs> sa nalilito na siya kung ano dapat ang dag. sorry secretary pero observation ko yon so yeah. ibig sabihin um you can't really wiggle your way out of uh the what the facts, I think, no? Oh, yung mga nangyari, ano yung ginawa, tapos ano yung hindi nagawa. No? Because uh, that's precisely why we're here, no? To present the facts, to present um, the victims. Uh, we're here, yung mga families ng uh, extrajudicial kill, uh, victims ng extrajudicial killings and political prisoners, sila. Sila nagsalita on uh, the whatever, yung, yung kanilang karanasan, no? At yung mm -hmm. kanilang tingin tungkol sa human rights situation natin. Kalo, um, uh, uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I would just like to add to that because um, uh, just parang yung isang crucial difference na nakita ko dito sa UPR na to, which I don't think happened in the last UPR review in 2017. In the national report of the Philippine government that they submitted to the uh, uh, UN Human Rights Council uh, this week, uh, uh, 
there's a section there, uh, section five, which says competing human rights as an emerging as an emerging concern in an enabled civic space. Now, what this this section really is quite uh, worrisome because uh, I read it and then you get the you get the feeling that uh, uh, this is a section. This is kind of the uh, a mindset within the Philippine government in trying to. Uh, justify a lot of these uh, violations that we're seeing. For instance, it says there, mm -hmm. um, uh, it notes an emerging trend whereby conflicts arise in human rights discussion as a result of NGOs and CSOs and CSOs having opposing human rights positions on a particular issue. Ang sinasabi dito, yung problema ng interpretation ng human rights is all, is all because yung opposing part, uh, uh, interpretation mm -hmm. ng mga civil society organizations. And it says there, uh, Letter A, freedom from the, scour the scourge of illegal drugs and terrorism as a human right and the state's obligation to promote, protect, uh, protect and fulfill such right. The way I read that uh, sentence, it justifies the drug wins. Uh, because it's saying that uh, the human right of those, uh, suppose human right of those who are victims of the illegal drugs are, 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 are uh, you know, just as important an issue than the right of those who are being killed in the drug war. Uh, may, equi may equivalence lang ginaganoon. Now, letter B also says, human rights defense as an entitlement only to those who do not advocate or resort to violent extremism to reform society. Ito yung sinasabi nila na dapat uh, yung mga yung nire-red tag nila ng grupo like karapatan, ay walang karapatan yan para maging human rights defenders. So in, any, in, in a way, this justifies red tagging. Mm -hmm. Tapos, letter C, sinasabi nila, there's an equal valuing of the state's pursuit of social, economic rights and, you know, civil and political rights. Ang basa ko dito, it dilutes the seriousness of rights abuses, particularly right to life during the drug war. So, merong ganitong, ano ngayon ang gobyerno ito, merong ganitong uh, uh, moda sila na they're trying to make it appear, make it seem like, you know, the civil society community, the human rights movement, has a problem, and a lot of those problems are, are you know, uh, uh, because of their opposing interpretation of uh, human rights, which is actually pretty much bunk, if you ask. Wow. So, parang lumalabas, the, the, the idea is that because, in their view, uh, the civil, uh, the human rights space is a contested space, you know, that, that explains why, you know, you, you hear this, and maybe it's why you hear this all the way in, in Geneva. Uh, they're, trying to, even, they're trying to undermine the credibility of human rights uh, organizations and civil society organizations. And this was not part of the 2017 government? I don't think case. it was. Because the, 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 the moment I saw that in this report, I was like, whoa, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's quite consistent with the way they're framing the discussion in Manila in you know, in media interviews. You know, they always... And it, this falls into this whole red tagging narrative this falls into this whole narrative about oh rights lang ba ng mga drug users ang ang gusto niyo protektahan paano naman yung mga biktima ng illegal drugs so parang nilagyan nila ng parang ano nilagyan nila ng prinsipyo yung ganung klaseng pagtingin i i was actually struck by something that he said before the council uh, he said you know um uh, people using the human rights environment as a political tool Mm -hmm. So parang, lumang, parang if you connect it to that section 5, parang essentially, ang, ang depensa nila is political lang yan. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Parang nila palawas, di ba? Political lang yan. Uh -huh. did, did, did you get that sense? Can you, can you make sense of, of, of that? Lo, yun ang lumang tugtugin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> di ba? Yun ang lumang tugtugin, Senate President mm -hmm. uh, Subiri. Kasi sinasabi niya, lumang tugtugin na daw yung mga pinagsasabi tungkol sa violations mm -hmm. sa Pilipinas na dito sa UN. Mm -hmm. I think that line uh, by the Philippine government on, you know, of I mean essentially distorting, no? Uh, human rights principles is uh, is very inconsistent with what it has um, uh, signed on to or ratified na mga international uh, treaties and covenants. I mean, pinagyayabang ng gobyerno yan, 12 out of 13 international uh, core human rights treaties ang pinirmahan niya. But do they really get, do they, do they actually get it? Diba? And there are many, there have been many general comments by you know the treaty bodies kasi Human Rights Council, 
hindi lang naman yan gobyerno eh. No, nandiyan yung gobyerno, mm-hmm. merong independent experts, merong mga treaty bodies, etc. May civil society. So, um, tag dito, uh, nag, nag-interact lahat yung ano na yan, yung, yung mechanisms na yan. At may bearing sa pag-define ng international norms, ng international human rights norms, yung mga opinions, lalong-lalo na ng mga independent uh, UN experts. So, I, I think... Um, ang totoong political yung ginagawa ng gobyerno no kasi in the sense it 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 i mean sa totoo lang ha yung yung letter of the national report uh, the way uh, the philippine government answers uh, also speaks of how um uh, mababaw to, at the very least mababaw ang understanding nila sa international human rights covenants and you know sa, uh, sa human rights law sa international human rights law Um, at the very least, no. Pero at most, it's really because they want to uh, paint a uh, 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 rosy picture sa ng human rights sa ating bansa uh, para pagtakpan yon katotohanan. So, uh, at siguro I think in the in the final analysis, of course, this space is a very political space. What do they expect, mm-hmm. diba? <laughs> It's a yeah. very political space. Uh, we're talking about human rights and um, uh, obligations and compliance. Of course, it's highly political, especially when states are directly involved in uh, various human rights violations. Um, it's the, uh, uh, Secretary Rimulia, no? talking about this, uh, the use of a uh, political tool, parang parang bumabalik lang sa dati parang parang ganun ng parang ganun ng impression ko no uh, i wanted to ask uh, there's another um, stakeholder or participant in this process and these are the member countries uh, in the human rights council ano um si Jones uh, filed a report yesterday a 15 minute report uh, which included uh, a summary of what the different countries uh, recommended no their forms of intervention. I just want to uh, play a short clip, uh, about a minute long, uh, uh, the st- uh, when, when uh, Jodes uh, Gabilan uh, starts to uh, summarize what the country, what the member countries are doing. Yeah, can you roll that? Then, itong drug war review panel na nilaunch nitong two years ago during the pandemic, ito ang ginagamit ng Pilipinas para panlaban sa Uh, international scrutiny tulad ng nangyayaran proceedings sa International Criminal Court. So, uh, sasabihan ko muna yung rundown siguro ng main points ng mga bansa uh, na ngayong UPR. Base sa aking bilang, kasi tandaan natin 45 plus countries ang nagsalita tungkol sa situation sa Pilipinas. Base sa aking bilang, at least 11 countries ang nagsabi na dapat magkaroon pa ng mas mabusising investigasyon sa drug war. Dapat Uh, tulad ng Australia, Austria, Canada, Chile, Croatia, Cuba, sa Republic, Estonia, France, Germany, and Iceland. Uh, itong mga bansa na to, hindi na to surprising na ganito ang kanilang stand sa drug war sa Pilipinas dahil mga, itong mga nakaraang mga taon during the height of the drug war, sila-sila ring mga bansa ang naging mas strong sa UNHRC sa pagkalabas ng mga resolution uh, tungkol sa uh, drug war. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, Jodes uh, Gavilan uh, reporting from Geneva. Um, Inay, uh, what was the most striking thing of all the marami yan, ano? uh, uh, country recommendations? Can you talk about one or two that uh, you thought were particularly strong or surprising? Well, I think uh, the total number of recommendations on uh, uh, violations on civil and political rights, drug war, uh, yung kawalan ng, ay, yung, yung attacks against human rights defenders, um, journalists and, uh, you know, lawyer, lawyers, mm-hmm. indigenous peoples. Uh, we, ano eh, we tallied about uh, 60 to 70 recommendations, uh, 60 to 70 states, no? Uh, out of the 110 who spoke. Uh, mm-hmm. ang nag ano ang, ang strongly ay uh, nanawagan uh, para itigil tong mga to and then there were many also who spoke about the uh, dapat magpatuloy yung ano yung investigations uh, independent investigations kasi nga 
um, maraming accusations, maraming allegations na ano, um, walang wala, no? At yun naman yung facts, wala din naman may pakita yung gobyerno na maraming bilang ng uh, successful prosecutions and convictions. Ang isa pang ano, um, uh, malinaw din, kahit yung gobyerno ay uh, maraming sinasabi tungkol sa civic space o yung tungkol sa, yan, yung sinabi nga nila red tagging is not their policy, uh, quite a few number of, of states said also na uh, dapat itigil na yung red tagging. So I think that's, that's significant in the sense that mm-hmm. There's recognition that it exists. I mean, it's not only a claim of you know uh, some mm-hmm. local human rights groups or uh, of uh, yung mga nireret tag sa atin sa Pilipinas. This this term has been used already by uh, the High Commissioner uh, Bachelet, uh, yung si uh, isa pang uh, special rapporteur on human rights defenders, si Mary Lawler. Mm-hmm. She actually called it a context-specific death threat in the Philippines. No? Having um, seen, uh, having had many complaints brought before her office no, on how red tagging uh, causes real world harm uh, sa mga uh, human rights defenders, uh, activists, at iba pa. No? So, tapos, pangatlo na yung sa human rights committee nung kinilala nila na yung red tagging ay um, tag dito, may adverse impact sa civic space sa atin. Pang-apat na to <laughs> sa um, isang platform katulad ng uh, Universal Periodic Review. So, tingin ko, um, hindi, ano eh, hindi makakatakas uh, yung gobyerno uh, doon mm-hmm. sa sinasabi nila na hindi nila policy yung red tagging o kaya red tagging is part of democracy in justifying uh, yung kanilang um, pag- uh, uh, tag dito pag paninira no sa mga human rights groups na pumupunta rito o nag engage sa UN no o naglalabas ng uh, mga documented cases nagre-report tungkol sa human rights violations sa Pilipinas hindi na nila ma ano eh hindi na nila tag dito they can't keep it on <laughs> so and no i mean it's very clear na hindi lahat nabobola nila dahil nga ang daming nagsalita tungkol sa mga issues na yan. So yun yung dalawang, uh, from the recommendations ng states, yung dalawang takeaways ko. Thank you. Kaloy, uh, let's talk absence. No? Uh, was there a recommendation that you were looking forward to but did not materialize? Uh, well, you know, uh, ang pinaka, I have to answer that, John, by pointing out that uh, ever since the 13th, 2016, uh, the mm-hmm. overriding concern among many human rights groups was the really uh, the, the the killings and the massive violations related to the drug war. So that eclipsed everything else practically. I mean, that's not to say that all the other human rights issues are not important, but that uh, that sort of dominated uh, the thinking. And in this UPR, um, I think hindi naman uh, nagkulang yung mga uh, observers, uh, CSOs, and even even uh, some countries who made recommendations to, you know, mm-hmm. to investigate it and, and, and to end it. Um, definitely, there was some hope that there were, uh, you know, some recommendations that they could have uh, taken up, like, for instance, uh, reproductive health rights, na medyo lakasan pa, divorce, for instance. Um, uh, you know, th- those are contentious issues, but also they fall within the ambit of human rights. Uh, uh, but again, as I said, that because of the sheer uh, seriousness of these outstanding human rights issues and the fact that, you know, wala pa rin naman talagang accountability na nangyayari, uh, medyo na-eclipse sila lahat. At gusto kong susugan yung uh, sinabi ni Tina tungkol sa proseso ng UPR and kung sinabi niya na walang kawala yung gobyerno dito. Actually, uh, itong sa UPR and the way the uh, member states, uh, you know, participate in the process, uh, this, is, this is quite remarkable and so different from, for instance, uh, yung conduct ng mga states during the regular Human Rights Council session where they would, you know, vote on resolutions na medyo masubjected pa siya to, uh, you know, all the geopolitical considerations. Mm-hmm. Uh, naglalabi ang Pilipinas not to pass a resolution, for instance, or mm-hmm. uh, to support or not to support something uh, a resolution that's on the table. Nangyayari yan sa regular session. In this, in this uh, review, you know, states can very, very vocally 
and and sometimes even in a in a, in a confrontational tone uh, address many of these issues and we're happy that they're taking the taking that opportunity to uh, you know to take the Philippine government to tasks now um, you know the only question uh, the only question here, because wala, wala, kumbaga, walang lusot ang Pilipinas dito, well-documented na yung mga violations. Even, keep in mind dyan, the states and then the UN uh, uh, the UN uh, human rights mechanisms such as the OSHR, the UPR review, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and the civil society. These are the three pillars of the UPR review. Malaking bagay ang naiambag na ng OSC, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in laying out the facts that Tina adverted to. For instance, mm-hmm. pati yung mga extrajudicial killings uh, na nireport na nila even before the UN joint program got off the ground. So, hindi lang ito ingay ng civil society. Within the UN system, sila mismo na determine nila yung mga issues ng human rights na kinakaharap ng gobyerno. So, wala na talagang lusot ang gobyerno. So, ang tanong na lang dito dyan is ano ba ang gagawin ng UN if they find out later on na hindi talaga nag-co-comply yung gobyerno ng Pilipinas sa kanilang mga human rights commitment. So I think that's the more, I think that's the issue that we we, we should really be looking out for in terms of answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John, we, yeah, go ahead, Tinay. Uh, John, at, ako re, uh, tingin ko may uh, maraming nawala rin na issues no dito sa mm-hmm. UPR kasi maraming... Um, civil society na nagsub, nagbigay ng submissions on economic and socio-cultural rights. No? For example, yung uh, mga uh, pandemic restrictions and how it has impacted on the libri- libri- livelihood and rights of the common people by or yung mga mahihirap. Tapos ano yung mga naging, ano yung uh, problema? Yung ngayon, no? yung kinakaharap nating inflation, yung mataas na rate ng uh, unemployment and underemployment, ah, wala to dun sa mga recommendations <laughs> at saka sa mga in-address actually ng gobyerno. No? I mean, they rattled off some funds na sinabi, ah, bibigay namin to sa DSWD, bibigay namin to sa, sumbayan, sa, sa DOLE, no? pero, or, or sa Department of Agriculture, pero, ano eh, um, they, 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 they didn't dispute yung ano yung mga civil society submissions at the same time they they said nothing <laughs> on on the economic crisis ngayon so i think that's that's direly lacking uh, sa discourse ng uh, UPR no mm-hmm. at saka sa sa ano rin sa kwentahan ng uh, UN Human Rights uh, Council when we speak of human rights dito sa ating bansa i think also Tina just to add to that uh, the issues on labor labor rights violations yeah. I think they didn't get a lot of attention, and uh, obviously we, uh, uh, that is that remains a very uh, crucial issue in the Philippines, particularly because of the pandemic, you know, unemployment, poverty, and all of that. Um, but again, uh, uh, hindi ko naman sinasabing in ignore ito ng ng uh, civil society. It's just that there's just so many balls up in the air, and uh, uh, and and you know the process can be quite overwhelming, uh, particularly mm-hmm. now. So um, you know, the, there's always this uh, issue, or there's always this desire to have a certain focus. Pero uh, given that you have, you know, all the member states participating in the process, although you know, uh, in varying degrees, uh, talagang may may hirap ang track. So I think now the onus really now is on the UN, the UPR system, to really track the compliance of of the Philippine government. There's um, there's what is called a uh, persistent non-compliant country. Um, where the Philippines, I don't think, is there yet. Um, keep in mind, we only have uh, three cycles of the UPR now uh, since it was yeah. found, uh, founded in 2006. So the government can argue that the UPR process is uh, relatively young. Yeah. So they use it to try to wiggle themselves out of all these issues. But that's uh, uh, uh so very young, ang UPR process, and yet, in the at least in the context of the Philippines, a lot of human rights issues are at play, and and there's just you know, pasalamat talaga tayo. I'm I'm not tooting our own here horns here from civil society, but if not for the participation of civil society in this process, mahirapan talaga ang UN to keep track of all of this. You know, this is so fascinating, but we're running out of time. 
Um, I have three questions. Uh, this is unfair to you. I'm gonna put them all together and I'll address, <laughs> I'll address these three questions to both of you. No? Uh, well, let's start with that, uh, what, what you just uh, talked about, all the things that were uh, not exactly neglected but were not highlighted. No? Para ang, ang laki ng sakop ng Human Rights Council. And as you said at the start, it's really just a, just a political body no? uh, with geopolitical considerations and, and so on. Ang laki ng sakop. So, first question, what can the UN system do? How can it enforce compliance? That's the first question. Second question is, if it cannot enforce compliance, uh, is, it, is it still worth taking part in the process? Parang nakikita ko na yung sagot ni Tinay, but maybe we can, we can develop that. And then we can end with a third question. Um, so what's the next step? Mauna ka na, Kaloy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, dito, dito, dito natin matetest ngayon yung seriousness ng UN system kung paano nila i-enforce talaga itong UPR review, review at saka yung, uh, you know, to make sure that states comply with their mm-hmm. commitments. Um, you know, how to do that? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tricky question. I, I don't think, I, I don't think the, uh, the UN uh, would rely just on the UPR review to now, you know, uh, mm-hmm. launch a commission on inquiry in the Philippines uh, on, for, uh, for instance, on the drug war killings. But uh, all this information that they're gathering during during the process feed into all the other uh, uh, branches of the, the UN system. So mm-hmm. if it comes to a point mm-hmm. in the future na kailangan nilang uh, mag-launch ng uh, investigation, which is something that we, a lot of us in the civil society organizations have been uh, demanding ever since 2016 uh, to launch an independent uh, investigation on drug war killings, this certainly will help the UN determine uh, kung ipupush ba nila yun o hindi. Now, uh, you know, is that something that we can expect from uh, from the UN? You know, it's hard to say. It's there. It's the it's a, it's a mechanism that's there that uh, all member states need to uh, uh, to get to engage in to get involved in. Um, the risk for the Philippines is that it becomes if it continues to be non-compliant in many of its commitments, uh, it risks uh, being. Uh, uh, shamed in the international community, and it will lose its footing uh, in the international community as well. And also, more con- more crucially, um, regard uh, dahil uh, kahit at sinasabi natin separate ang ICC, which is investigating the Philippines uh, mm-hmm. from the UN. Uh, all of this will also feed into one way or another into the determination of the ICC about what's happening mm-hmm. in the Philippines. So, so, so that that that's the the thing there. And ultimately, I think. Uh, all of this process, kung talagang matinulang itong gobyerno ito, and they really respect human rights and uphold, you know, all of this, uh, they should take the review process as an opportunity to make a meaningful, significant changes. They cannot just wish this away. They cannot just, you know, throw this under the rug and to use other metaphors, uh, because the problems are serious. So, so they risk, you know, stigmatizing themselves even more if they don't comply. Thank you, and Tina. Um, tingin ko mas malaki yung um, yung yung bigger yung mas mabigat the heavier yung bigat ng unos ng ng um, pagpapakita ng sincerity and engaging with the international community ay yung yung Philippine government di ba kasi buti kung ano lang yan kung one press release two press releases lang nila yan reports to eh no? national government reports yung sinasubmit nila rito uh, replies to you know communications etc these, these are official um, documents so, so kung hindi nila susundin no yung mga recommendations the dead mahin nila ino noted na naman nila yung mga man- maraming recommendations o ire reject nila sa darating na march kasi may kasunod pang process ito eh sa march um, next year so uh, tama si Kaloy uh, maipapakita lalo na hindi sila serious doon sa pag-address ng uh, human rights violations sa bansa and in strengthening their position, the government's position, sa, isa, sa mga multilateral bodies like the United Nations. No? Kasi they made, they made ano eh, a lot of noise about it. Eh. Him going to the UN General Assembly, Bongbong going to the General Assembly, di ba? Tapos mm-hmm. ang dami niyang biyahe nito lang. So, mm-hmm. uh, 
yung diploma yung diplomatic charm offensive uh, makikita for show lang no uh, pa- makikita para lang sa negosyo pero nasaan yung uh, ubaga sabi na people centered no na ano diyan na approach diyan sa ganyang klase ng mga byahe-byahe mo <laughs> sa mga uh, APEC mm-hmm. o kaya sa mga ba- mga bodies katulad ng UN um pangalawa uh, yung anong dapat gawin anong dapat sa, sa dapat to pumunta no no ne- so next year uh, sa March nga sa susunod na UN Human Rights Council uh, session the Philippines will have to say what uh, it accepts rejects or notes na mga recommendations dito mm-hmm. yung mga sinabi ng gobyerno um tapos it should be also placed in the context of um civil society's challenge to many numerous states uh, to numerous states na ano na ngayon na mangyayari di ba if the government doesn't fulfill its um commitments uh, and wala pa ring makuhang mga mga meaningful prosecution sa loob ng bansa gano na lang yon <laughs> so uh, nag mag, uh, ano kami sa iba't ibang mga uh, human rights groups talagang porsigido kami na iingay pa rin yung kail- pangailangan ng independent investigation yung sinasabi ni Kaloy kasi wala na ibang mag address eh no doon sa sitwasyon sa bansa kundi yung ganong mechanism kung pag-usapan natin yung UN o kaya yung ICC. Uh, quickly, John, if I may add, oh. mm-hmm. uh, an important point I missed. Uh, just on that, on ano, y- ano yung pwedeng gawin? I think kailangan natin kalampagin palalo ang European Union uh, to heed all of these issues that came out during the UPR review process. Because keep in mind, the, the Philippine government is reapplying for what is called the GSP plus mechanism uh, with the EU. This is a mechanism that sets the tariffs that's being uh, collected uh, uh, on Philippine exports by the European Union countries, uh, uh, according to uh, uh, you know whether the, the Philippine government uh, upholds or respects human rights or violates human rights. There are 27 conventions and agreements on human rights and labor that they need to satisfy para makakuha mm-hmm. sila ng mas lower na tariff on our Philippine exports. So in other words, merong malaking uh, practical implications ito sa business uh, and also livelihood ng mga Pilipino na reliant on exports. So mm-hmm. the more human rights abuses are being committed, uh, according to these GSP plus mechanisms, the higher the tariffs that the EU countries will collect from the Philippines. And that means lower exports, right? So, uh, dapat kalampagin natin ang EU to really make sure that they, uh, they they include in their deliberation, in their determination of whether they grant this preferential treatment to the Philippines, uh, you know, out of the documentation that's been presented in the UPR review process. Yun ang pwedeng uh, isa sa mga kailangan gawin. Oh wow, and dami ang kailangan gawin. Um, I, I also wanted to say that uh, Secretary Rimulia missed the opportunity to uh, uh, to achieve a, a very good gesture, no, of uh, dropping charges against uh, Senator Laila de Lima. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone in the Human Rights Council mm. would never, uh, you know, going to Geneva with, with something like that. But uh, uh, this has been a fascinating discussion to Tinay, Palabay in Geneva and Kaloy Conde. Uh, thank you for an illuminating, enlightening, enlightening discussion. Your work uh, not only helps defend the public square, it also helps define its contours. Again, many thanks. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tinay. We're going to That's it for us tonight. The next step for engaged citizens is always to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.